Now we're on to the next set of DVDs. We're gonna go over these first. The meat and potatoes of my nostalgia. Oh boy. <laughs> I really love all three of these movies. The best mummy films I've ever seen in my entire life. I just never forget them. And this film turns 20 years old, so happy anniversary to the mummy. And this is obviously my favorite in the whole entire trilogy. And this one's pretty underrated, so honestly, I don't have any problems with this one aside from the few issues that I probably might state in my uh, review or my journal review on Deepening Art. Here's a look at them at the back. Out of all the way these are designed, I pretty much like how the third movie is designed at the back side, so it looks pretty fun. Here are the OG DVD copies of Jurassic Park, The Lost World, and Jurassic Park 3, all on the red full screen banners. Still to this day, they, they got such a really iconic looking design on their DVDs. Even though the third film is basically their poster, but really the first two look really amazing. Here's how all three films look at the back. And right here, welcome to Jurassic World. So here's the original DVD copy from 2015, featuring Owen and his raptors. And there's the back side of this one, featuring the mosasaurs and other still images from the film. So we got that one out the way. And here's the five movie collection that I've already went over on my uh, Christmas haul video. Featuring all five films, including the additional copies that I have for the first four, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which is absolutely my favorite Jurassic Park film. So, yeah, there's the back side. And there you have it. Yep, this thing is getting taller, but I'm not going to try to stack them up all the way to her, up to the roof. I mean, up to the ceiling. Yeah, let's uh, let's continue. So here's the only few James Bond films I have on DVD. For starting off, we're gonna go over the only Roger Moore movie I have on DVD for your eyes only. I freaking love this movie. This is actually one of my favorite ones, anyway. So this is the only one I felt that I really should have bought. And I think I might have to go ahead and collect all the other Bond films alongside. I may have to go get them in updated collections or updated DVDs and Blu-rays, but. Aside from that, I bought the original uh, DVDs for nostalgia impact, I guess. I really do like buying them in older DVDs, even if I like the remastered sound effects better in other films. But this is how this one looks at the back. So this is in the original special edition DVDs when they were first released. So that's For Your Eyes Only. Pretty good movie. Then The Living Daylights, also on a special edition DVD. Timothy Dalton's first outing as James Bond. As you can see, he's standing right up beside of an explosion, which I don't know if that's really the best cover for this movie, but it's really freaking amazing. It's really fun. So, yeah. And there's the back side of the film. And the next special edition DVD I have, License to Kill. And I bought this version of the film because this is the only one that cuts off all the graphic parts because this is literally the most uh, graphic James Bond film release up until other Bond films in the Daniel Craig era. But yet again, this is really a fun movie, and this movie also turns 30 years old. Any movie in 1989 turns 30 years old, so pretty good movie. I really do enjoy this. It's pretty underrated. So here's the back side. And that's License to Kill. And then here are the Pierce Bronson movies, so we're going to go over... GoldenEye, which I think this might be the original DVD version that came out. And this one does contains both pan and scan, full screen, and widescreen editions. So, this is one reason why I bought this set. I didn't get the special edition DVD, but I might have to find that one soon just for the bonus materials. So, this is pretty good. GoldenEye is one of the best Bond films ever been released. There's another one of my favorite films, Tomorrow Never Dies. This is the original DVD that came out, which also features a full screen and widescreen edition. And here's another 20 year old movie, The Well Is Not Enough. This is obviously a movie that I grew up with and started off my James Bond obsession. <laughs> now it was either this movie that started my obsession or was it 2002's Die Another Day, which is also a full screen version, but is a completely different uh, release. But the whole uh, case when you lift the uh, 
lift the paper back up, it's completely different. So let me lift this up with one hand. Yep, it's gonna take a while. There you go. So that's how it looks. Here's the back. Yep. This is pretty nostalgic because I remember seeing this a lot. So yeah, this is definitely a great movie. I mean, it's not a perfect movie, but it's a really fun adventure film. So, I mean, here's the back of that one. No, it's not one of the best Bond films, but it's an exciting film, let's just say that. And here's the only Daniel Craig, James Bond movie I have on DVD. And this is an older copy we have for such a long time. Phantom of Solace, an underrated James Bond film again. So, yeah. Definitely love watching this one. Okay, I'm desperate. I'm serious. Alright, we're on the last set of DVDs right there. Let's go get out the Shark Week 20th Anniversary Collection, which I had for such a long time. Boy, I really love this. Look at this dang thing. Showing the shark actually moving and coming towards the screen. That is so amazing. And this is the one I had a lot. I mean, I've watched this a lot more. I did have another Shark Week DVD set, but I have no idea what happened to that one. So, yeah. This is the one I watched the most anyway. So, it got four discs with 14 different Shark Week programs. Let's get out the DVDs. Move that aside. Now, as we all know, the hologram or the holographic screen shows the shark coming at you. But if you divide them all up in different uh, segments and DVDs, this is what we get. And here's how they all look in the back. This is just four. There's three. A little bit for autofocus. There's two. And disc one. Up next we have Deep Blue Sea, another 20 year old movie. The first one is the only good one. No, I do not like the sequel. I actually got a chance to watch it at the time. And um, yeah, I enjoyed it the first time, but then I watched it over and over again. It just kept sucking. So yeah, I did not like that second movie. As time went on, I will still cherish the first film. So it's definitely great. And as you can see, there's the giant Mako shark in the back. And yes, I know what the sharks are. They're Mako sharks, not great whites. So whoever said that is ridiculous. Didn't understand what the sharks were. But yet again, Mako sharks do have a tend of being a little similar to great whites at times, but they got more serrated teeth like a sand tiger shark. So this is Deep Blue Sea 1. Definitely an iconic movie. Bring it all the way up there. And next, I got the Jaws 3 movie collection. I still have this to this day. I've already went over it, so... I don't know if I did a pretty good job going over it back then. <laughs> yeah, I went over this back then. I really do uh, like the set, mainly for Jaws 3 and the Revenge, because they're restored, but even though they're on a DVD instead of their Blu-ray counterparts, but they weren't released until Blu-ray up until uh, like after this DVD release and Jaws 2 didn't get a fix and didn't get a proper fixing because I had no idea why they didn't fix Jaws 2 because they just released the DVD which I have right there so yeah all three sequels in one collection oh my god I gotta be careful damn thing is tilting and up I got the original DVD release of Jaws Revenge and as you can see the case inside probably fell out because the the, the holder of the CD probably broke. The CD is still okay because this movie still watches. I like watching this one because it at least contains a little bit more deleted scenes than the initial DVD release of 2004 and the 2015, I guess, 2014 DVD release. Yeah, whatever. So this one has at least a little bit more longer footage aside from like still keeping that same stupid ridiculous shark blowing up ending. I hate that ending. I like the original version, which they also have on a Blu-ray. So, as you can see, there's the Great White Shark over there, and uh, as you can see, it looks a little different in the color scheme. And I actually do like this one, so I have no idea why they didn't keep that shark's color scheme like that. Because every time you look at it in the movie, the color scheme makes it look like it's like so dang yellow or bronze or whatever the color it was. So it just doesn't look like a real Great White Shark if the colors didn't look exactly right. So this looks pretty good. 
And this is an older DVD release, as you can say. Contains new footage not seen in US theaters. This is also re this is also released in the VHS, but this is not that particular version. Here's the back side of the DVD. Now we know Jaws of Revenge is really literally one of the worst movies of all time. And I do Agree, this is definitely not a good movie, but it has some good qualities, and I genuinely love the few, a bunch of things about this film, but not a whole lot. Just a few, let's just say that. <sighs> We're done with that one. Jaws 2, the original DVD release when it was announced. There's only a widescreen, there's no full screen, sadly. I wish there was, but I guess that's only on the VHS. And here's the backside. Featuring Martin Brody and some still images and the bio. So we're done with that one. Oh my god. I gotta be careful. Okay. And a set. The first movie that my older brother got me back in the time when it was out. The 30th anniversary edition. I couldn't be more thankful for him giving me this because... My goodness, I was actually really tired of seeing Jaws on TV when they keep cutting out a bunch of stuff. I mean, I've seen it firsthand on TV on how much stuff they cut out. Seeing this one, seeing more footage and a lot of the different stuff, I'm like, this movie was great. I think it got better, even though a lot more scarier when it was uncut. So, yeah, this is definitely a great movie. Definitely, definitely recommend buying this one. And I really wish to buy the restored version on Blu-ray because it features one of my favorite uh, Jaws documentaries. The shark is still working. Got that one. Oh, be careful. Go. And last but not least, we got our Harry Potter film. So let's go over Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Now, I love this movie, and I also like its uh, sequel, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Went to go see that in the theater. I mean, it wasn't as good as the first film, but yeah, it was definitely a really good movie. So I really enjoyed it. Wait for that autofocus to get. Yeah, the autofocus is sucking here. <laughs> okay, there we go. So this is the back of the DVD. This is also in a two-disc special edition DVD set, so that's kind of pretty nostalgic to me, to having it in a two-disc special edition. No, I'm just gonna lay it on the side. I'm not gonna build a dang tower. Okay, so let's get over the first five Harry Potter films I've owned on DVD. So we got Order of the Phoenix on the full-screen DVD, Goblet of Fire on the widescreen DVD, Prisoner of Azkaban on the two-disc full-screen DVD, Harry Potter and Chamber of Secrets, in a two disc full screen DVD and the original copy of Sorcerer's Stone on a widescreen DVD. And yes, they're all pretty banged up. Well, just these two mainly. They're pretty banged up for how much I had them for such a long time. I had them ever since at that time. I was a little, I think I was a little baby when this came out and we had it on that DVD. So here's the back of the first movie. If I let them open, there's actually a booklet, so this is how it looked. But I guess if anybody who owned this back then, they would know what it looked like. Here's disc one, which also features scenes, uh, the scene index right here, and more still images, like a compilation of many iconic moments of Harry Potter on the side. So let me level over this one, which is disc two, bonus materials, featuring Ron and Hermione. Another scene index, also plus theatrical trailers, as it says down there. And we got more iconic images of the film. Here's Chamber of Secrets right here. Another old copy that I had for such a long time. Definitely nostalgic. So this one still opens up into the booklet. And this is kind of like Sorcerer's Stone. Except a little bit of a different layout. And this one doesn't have a compilation of scenes. It's more likely just Harry and Draco duking out with each other. And yes, it's broken. Like, again, this is an older DVD copy. Oh, it's pretty dang broken. And we got Scene Index. Right from here. So there's that. Here's Prisoner of Azkaban. The original DVD copy. They didn't have it on their deluxe editions like they always had them, so this one's kind of disappointing. But yet again, this is literally one of the best Harry Potter films, so you don't really need a deluxe DVD set like these two films. <laughs> so this was really good. So yeah, that's the third film. And here's the fourth Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Another DVD copy we had for such a long time. We had all these for a long time. And when they came out on DVD, 
So every time when a Harry Potter movie was announced, I was destined to get the DVD or go and see it in the theater. So that's Goblet of Fire. Here's Order of the Phoenix. Which is also the full screen copy and this was the original DVD release at the time. And I don't own Half-Blood Prince and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 and 2 yet, which I need to own them soon sometime. Or just might have to update the Harry Potter collection with the complete collection set. And there you have it. That's all the movies and stuff I have right now. Yep, it's all at a tower. And yes, I decided to just do a tower out of it. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll be seeing you guys later.